Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to another episode of Rare Plant Index. If you don't know what Rare Plant Index is, it is basically a series here on YouTube where I take a genus or a type of plant and I try my best to categorize it from uncommon to rare to very rare to extremely rare houseplants. If applicable, I will always try and include a holy category. However, that is not always applicable to the plants that we're talking about. I usually only keep the holy category free if there is a holy grail plant that is considered to be, you know, of that variety. For example, the holy grail monstera, a lot of people would say would be the monstera oblica, holy grail philodendron, a lot of people would consider to be the philodendron spiritus sancti. Before we begin, I would also like to say a word on rarity because I don't think I've made this clear in the past, when I talk about rarity, I'm talking about commercial rarity or more specifically commercial availability of these plants. I'm not talking about, you know, numbers in the wild or anything like that. So if I've confused anybody in the past, I apologize. I didn't make that clear enough. I'm not talking about, you know, how many of these plants there are in the world. That's absolutely not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about simply in terms of the market at the moment, because these videos can go out of date. A lot of my old ones have. We're talking about how commercially rare these plants are at this given moment on average, around the world. So if you can't already tell, please take what I say with a bit of a grain of salt because what is rare for me in this part of the world, I'm in Europe, is not rare for other people. For example, in the US, Canada, Asia, all of these other places. So please use your own judgment. I always do my best to take that into account when I do these videos, but I can't get it 100% right for everybody. So without further ado, this week's Rare Plant Index is on Peperomia. I did get a few requests for this a while ago. I have only just got around to doing this now. It would appear from my research that Peperomia generally aren't priced very high. They're not in high demand. I don't think the hype that surrounds, say, Aroids or even Hoya and things like that, I don't think Peperomia has that hype. So even when I say something is very rare, the price tag really, it, it doesn't really indicate that at all. And I just think that Peperomia maybe haven't had that press yet and it hasn't maybe taken off for them. They're just not in demand. They're not a highly sought after house plant. So that could be the reason for that. It is just something to note though. It's definitely something I noticed when I was you know, planning for this video. So the first common Peperomia I wanna mention is the Peperomia Ferreira. Ferreira? I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but it's also known as the Happy Bean Peperomia. And these are pretty adorable. I see these in plant shops all the time. They're pretty popular. A lot of people own them. I get why. They, they're just so cute. You know, I totally get it. I, I can't bash that, that's great. Second on the list, slightly similar, is the Peperomia Dolabriformis? Dolabriformis. Dolabriformis. Why does it make me sound exotic? This is similar to the previous one, but the leaves are honestly quite a lot stubbier. And this is a Peperomia I see all the time, and that is the Peperomia Caperata. Cap there are so many varieties of this Peperomia, it's crazy. But this is the one I'm just gonna briefly mention because I feel like this is the one that I see pop up all the time. Another common one I see all the time is the Peperomia Puteolata. I do see this a lot more now. There was a period of last year where I didn't, but I think when I was in the Netherlands this year, I definitely saw a lot more of it around so I predict that's gonna be more readily available this year. Moving on from that, in common, we have the Peperomia raindrop. And I don't know if this is common for everybody, but over here in my Ikea, that's like all they sell. It's like the Peperomia that Ikea have selected to sell. So I'd be curious if it's the same for anybody else. Maybe even just down to whether it's in other Ikea, I don't know. But over here, it's very, very common. It is not difficult to get a hold of this plant at all. So let me have a quick drink because I'm feeling very ill by the minute, I'll be honest. So we will start our list with, of course, Uncommon. And the first plant I have for you in Uncommon is the Peperomia scandens variegata. Now, obviously with the Peperomia scandens, there is an all green version. I don't actually hear people talk about this plant. Maybe I'm just, you know, out the loop. I do quite like this one, but really you have to evaluate why. And you already know what I'm gonna say. It's because it looks quite like a philodendron scandens that I have back there. I wouldn't pick it up, you know, on the simple reason that it does look so similar, that I can't justify it. I would just stick to my Philodendron. But if you like that kind of thing and you want a Peperomia, this is absolutely the one to go for. It's beautiful. I don't really see it in shops, but I don't doubt you can't get it. Next on the list, and I do like this one. This is the Peperomia maculosa. Now, I feel like this wasn't a thing last year. Now it's definitely a thing and it's become way more common. It's kind of like flooded the market a little bit. I quite like this and it, it's, again, wholly obvious why I like it. 
it's a little bit arid -y, isn't it? I can get behind this, I think, because the leaves are bigger, longer, they've got more to them. It doesn't really remind me of a Peperomia, but I do like this. Next on the list for Uncommon in Peperomia is the Peperomia verticillata. This plant, it, the picture I'm looking at is really cute, actually. It's got burgundy undersides to the leaves, which I'm totally here for, can I just say. But I don't love the way it grows. I could just be this picture, but it just looks a little bit messy. And I don't know what it is. I'm starting to pick up on this. I don't like messy looking plants. I don't know. Like, should it be that elongated? Should it? Or should it be more compact? I don't know. Leave your answers in the comments down below because I don't doubt that, you know, a few of you probably own this plant. So let me know if it's supposed to be that stretchy or it should be more compact. There is a Peperomia further down on this list that I used to have for the burgundy undersides that I'd rather have more so than this one because it is more compact. So I will show you that in a moment. But that is the Peperomia verticillata. Next on the list for Uncommon, and I used to own this plant, I miss it, I will have it back the second I get into a new place and it's got a lovely little table near a window, this plant is coming back, I will tell you that for nothing. This is the Peperomia argyrea also known as the watermelon peperomia. And it's pretty obvious to see why it's known as the watermelon peperomia, because it looks like a load of watermelons. I want to mention that there is a variegated form of this, but what I will say is it's not rare by any means. I know a few people tend to fall into the trap of thinking that basically, and I sh I sh maybe I should do a video on this, but I feel like a lot of people fall into the trap of thinking that a variegated version of anything is rare. And that's just not true. It's like saying, well, variegated ivy is more rare. I feel like the variegation on this particular peperomia actually spoils the appearance of it, personally. Like, I love it just as it is. I wouldn't want a variegated one. If I saw a variegated one and I saw this, I would prefer the original. Obviously, each to their own. I feel like this is one of these plants where if you know someone that isn't into house plants and they come to your house and they see this plant, it's always, and it always used to be, the first plant people would be like, oh my gosh, is that real? Like, what is that? So it's a really beautiful statement plant. If you want to try Peperomia and you don't want to be disappointed, trust me, get this one, because it's beautiful. It's really beautiful. Next on the list in Uncommon is the Peperomia obtrusifolia. And I'm showing the Varigata one, but there is obviously a green one as well. I just thought I'd show the Varigata just to spice it up a little bit, because you know, I'm all about the spice. It appears to be pretty popular in the Peperomia world, this one. I do see a lot of people owning it, a lot of people looking for it, all the rest. Obviously, it's not too difficult to find either. So, oh, my voice is going. Next Peperomia on the list for Uncommon is the Peperomia clusifolia. Now, I have clusifolia tricolor here. You can get the green version. I'm gonna be totally honest here. I know somebody that has this plant. I've seen it in real life, and I am not a fan. I don't know what it is. I just think this plant is a little bit ugly. I think what I've nailed it down to is the variegation. The cream variegation isn't cream enough. It almost looks a little bit like a dirty yellowy cream. And I think that's a large part of the reason why I don't love it. Also, the pink is a little bit kind of watered down, like it's faded in the sun. And I think that's another reason why I don't like it. Each to their own. Next on the list, and the last one actually in Uncommon, is the Peperomia Rosso. Now, I used to have one of these. It was so cute, it was tiny, and it's got the most beautiful growth pattern and the beautiful structure. The blooms just emphasize it, to be honest. And underneath, it's got gorgeous burgundy red undersides. Now, this is what I was saying before. I prefer this Peperomia to the other one that I mentioned, the one that seemed like it should be more compact. This one, any day, wins for me. I would still have the watermelon over this one, but it's gorgeous, and if you're looking for one, definitely try it. See it in person, and you'll be like, yes, okay, love it. Moving up a category, we have the Peperomia Asperula. This looks similar to one of the common Peperomias in this list, but it is a little bit more minimal and a little bit more stretched out than that, so it is different. I promise you it's different. It's so cute though, because it's got like leaves, but they're like little tacos. Now, I don't like tacos, I don't really like Mexican food, but I can't, I can't fail to acknowledge the cuteness there. That's really cute. Next up, we have the Peperomia Incarna, which is quite nice, actually. This looks different depending on which photograph I look at. I think this is a green plant, but because it's so velvety, it kind of looks silver. So that's really, really nice. I also like the leaf shape as well. It's got some really nice structure to it. I think if you want a silvery, fuzzy peperomia, this is definitely one to look for. I, I can't tell by the image I'm looking at. It's like a super zoomed in image, but it looks like it trails. It looks like it's that kind of thing. So that could be really, really pretty as well, if you're looking for that kind of thing. Next up, and I did want 
one of these. I did last year and I saw one and I didn't buy it and I don't know why I didn't buy it. I think I was just concerned that getting it home would be an issue because I thought it was going to break on me. But if you haven't seen this before, you're going to love it. This is the Peperomia columella. I think that's how it's pronounced. It probably isn't, but hey-ho. In a lot of images, it looks like a pot full of dragon's tails. Do you need any more reason to like this plant? No, you don't. You don't. It also reminds me a little bit of, is it a donkey's tail plant? but like more detailed and more more like scales than like little buds. I've only ever seen one of them in a shop once and then it just disappeared. So you can get a hold of them, but you're probably gonna have to dig around a little bit. I really think you should Google this and look at different pictures because I think you'll love it. Next up in rare is the Caperta, the Peperomia Caperta Pink Lady. Now I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that a lot of people probably seek out this plant. And I'm assuming it's because of the pink. Now the image I'm showing you does look to be a pretty good specimen as far as the pink is concerned. I've kind of, I'll be honest, I've kind of picked the best of the best in terms of that. If you do Google this, you will probably see what I'm talking about. The other plants don't seem anywhere near as pink. So please don't take this as the standard. If you are looking for this, do some Googling, get like a general sense of what it looks like first. So many people want the pink. We've previously got in trouble for liking pink too much. We all remember that last year. You know what I'm talking about. But there you go, pink peperomia. Okay, next on the list for rare is the peperomia figalindii. To be honest, it's a really delicate little plant. And I think if you have, if you'd want a trailing plant, but you don't have a lot of space, this could be a really cute one to go for because I, I don't suspect it's very difficult to care for either. I can't tell if it's velvety or not. I think it is, but honestly, don't quote me on it. I could be really wrong. Again, I'm looking at very small pictures on my phone, so. I might be wrong. Double check on the internet to see if it's velvety. I wouldn't necessarily go for this one as a trailing peperomia, personally, because there's one further down the list that I 1 million percent would have over this one, but it's very sweet. Next up on the list is the peperomia kimnachii. I think that's right. This reminds me quite a bit of rosemary. It just does. It's really weird for peperomia. It looks very different to any of the other peperomia on this list. I will say that. I've never seen another one similar, actually, in my travels uh, on the internet. So it's kind of rare, but it's also not popular. So I, I don't know. Let me know if you actually like the look of this. Let me know if you have one. It's, it's not for me, personally. I just think it's a bit weird and I can't get my head around the fact that it looks like rosemary, but it's very nice all the same. Moving up a category now to very rare, we will kick it off with... Now, hear me out, okay? We will kick this category off with... Peperomia Ecuador Prostrata, not described yet. Now, what am I talking about? So the normal Peperomia Prostrata is green. This version is what a lot of people refer to as a dark form of Peperomia Prostrata. And honestly, I think it's nicer than the original, I've got to say. I know a lot of people consider Peperomia Prostrata to be a very sought after plant. So for that reason, I really wanted to show you this because not a lot of people might know about it. There is definitely a difference between the two. The foliage on the dark form, we'll just call it for now, is a lot more pronounced and it's more ready burgundy. It's really, really striking. I don't think you can actually get full plants of it. I think it still might be in the cutting stage. I don't fully know, but I wanted to include it because I know it's such a popular plant and honestly, I do think that version is better. Just gonna come out and say it. I'm having to have like a sip of tea between every single plant. Right then, this one's quite interesting. This is Peperomia Ecuador SP. I don't think it's described, but seriously, I thought it was a begonia and I, I don't think it's hard to see why I did, to be honest. Like I can't be the only one that is getting begonia vibes from this. Therefore, I don't like it. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. It's nice actually. It's got really dark foliage and there's quite a nice dimension to the leaves. Plus, honestly, they're pretty much heart-shaped, so that's kind of a win. I don't love it, but I definitely prefer it to a lot of other peperomia on this list, 100% but it does look like a begonia. I hope I haven't accidentally put a begonia in here. That would be very embarrassing. Moving on, we have the Peperomia Tri-Nervous Bicolor. So I will start very quickly by saying I'm looking at an image now that is much less contrasted than a lot of the images on Google. And I'm not sure which one is the most like representative picture. So if you're interested, look it up. Let me know what you think because I always like help on these things. On Google, it's super silvery. Actually, it doesn't look like this at all. It depends if it looks like this or it looks silvery. That would probably change my opinion quite a bit. Next up on the list, this is quite a nice one. This is Peperomia Dependence. It's very, very nice, actually. It's got really nice dimension. It's got really, really pretty leaf shape, actually. It's like rounded, then it goes into a beautiful little point. And it's got some lovely little silver detailing, we'll call it, on the leaves. It's really, really pretty. I would like to see this as a more bushy plant because I do think this would look awesome, like en masse, I like to say. So basically not a cutting, just like a massive plant of it because I feel like a lot of plants look very different. They either look better 
better or worse. I don't know, I just struggle to evaluate plants when they're just little tufts. Like, my little brain can't like work out whether I like them or not. <laughs> it's so weird. Next on the list is Peperomia la laha trace. That is totally not going to be how you pronounce that, so I apologize to everybody I've probably just offended. This is a really cute little Peperomia. It's difficult to see from my image, but it does seem to have like an adorable little red pattern on the leaf. I can't tell. Honestly, this is a small ass image. Not only that, but my image has a little coin just to show you how small this Peperomia is. So no wonder I'm having problems. I'm viewing it on a phone. It's a small Peperomia and it's using a coin for scale. So I was never gonna win, really, was I? It's very cute, again, very small and compact. If you're looking for Peperomia, it's a little bit different. You don't have a lot of space. This is a great one to try. Next up on the list is the Peperomia Rugosa Aussie Gold. So this one is 100% a Peperomia you probably wanna add to your collection if you don't already have it. It's pretty striking, actually. It's got beautiful coloring. It's weird, it's like a Peperomia crossed with a Fetonia. Now again, Google images are showing me different levels of vibrancy, so I don't know the level of how gold this is. This could be a catfish thing. I'm not sure, so I just wanna put that out there right now. If you're curious, please do Google it yourself and decide for yourself because it just depends on which picture you wanna believe. You know what I mean? So do go and check it out, but from this picture, it looks absolutely fantastic. Next on the list, this one's very pretty as well. This is the Peperomia Moonlight. The colors remind me here of the Peperomia Watermelon, like quite a bit actually. I think it's got the same silvery cast to it. This is 100% though, a plant that you need like an all white pot for. In my opinion, this is just one of those ones where it just needs a white pot. And I feel that's the case with a lot of silvery colored plants actually. It needs a white pot. <laughs> that's my opinion on the plant. It needs a white pot. Moving on, this is the Peperomia Antoniana and this I had to include because it's a Peperomia with spots and you don't see that very often at all. Really, really round shaped leaves, they're kind of watermelony and they have accents but they're comprised of dots and I thought it was really, really cool. The foliage looks almost black as well. So I feel like if you're a begonia lover, you might want to try it, I don't know if you want to maybe venture into Peperomia. There was the other Peperomia earlier on that looked a bit like a begonia. That's a good one as well. I've seen different variations of this and some look velvety and some look waxy. So it's possible that there are different variations of this depending on whether you want something soft and furry or something, you know, more shiny. So do bear that in mind if this is something you're looking for. Okay, I need a cup of tea for this one because this is like one of my favorites. It's going to be so obvious why. But this is the Peperomia Ibernia. Yes, yes, yes. But if you can't already figure out why I love this plant, you, I, I, who are you? Like, are you new? It's like, depending on which variety of it that you find, it's like philodendron meets anthurium meets peperomia. It's lovely. This might be my second favorite plant on this list, actually. I still think number one is the watermelon because I just love it so much. And obviously I used to have one, so that's kind of swaying me a bit. But this one is definitely a close second. This plant needs more press. I've never heard of it till this red plant index. Not that I follow Peperomia, but I've never heard of it. This definitely needs more press. Next on the list, we have the Peperomia Metallica SP. This is a form of Peperomia Metallica, but it's got really cool like lines down it. Does that make sense? It's really, really dark foliage, really beautiful, delicate little white lines. It's very nice. I haven't seen this around. It's possible that I could move it into the category above, but I've kept it in this one as it's not described and it's not seen. So I'm not sure. If you know anything about this plant, please do let me know. Last one in my list for very rare. This is the Peperomia rugosa, but it's a super hairy form of it. So I know there is a normal rugosa, but I've never seen this before. It's so hairy. It's 100% a Peperomia, but it's so, so hairy. It's not velvety, like it's gone beyond velvet. So if you're into that, this might be a one to, you know, to see out. I think this one is very unique and I don't think you can really find it in that many places. It's probably not for everyone, you know, if you're not, you know, a fan of the fuzz, but if you are and you're looking for that kind of thing, this is 100% a pepperoni you should go for. Right, last category and there are two plants in this category. It was very, very difficult, this one. But this, this is bizarre, okay? So kicking off extremely rare for peperomia is the Peperomia Hutchesonii. Literally, I saw this plant and I had to check that it was peperomia several times because I honestly didn't think it was. What? Like, it just looks crunchy. I, I cannot be the only person that thinks that that looks crunchy. Like, you could crunch it like a crisp. You could crunch it. A lot of people say that the texture on this is like toad skin, but I just see crunch. I don't see anything else. Some pictures you see that it grows a little bit more like a happy bean type structure, but this is just a weird one, isn't it? I would never think 
that that was a peperomia, I would struggle. If you told me that was a peperomia and I hadn't, you know, researched, I would not believe you at all. Look at that, it's so weird. Last on my list for extremely rare because there is no holy. And that is the peperomia case spitosa spotted form. So there will probably be a regular form, I can only assume. It's another spotted peperomia and I can't get my head around it, it's so weird. It reminds me of a begonia, obviously, because it has spikes all over the leaves and I don't know how easy that is to see. I can't really find it on the internet either, so let me know if you've seen this before or you know what this you know, is, but it's like loads of spiky little coins. <laughs> Not only that, but if you look at the image, the guy's fingernail in comparison to this peperomia, this peperomia must be absolutely tiny, like an egg cup. An egg is probably larger than this entire plant. It's like a micro plant. Either that or this guy has absolutely massive hands, which I'll be honest, I did not consider. And unfortunately, that concludes my Peperomia Red Plant Index. As I've said before, this was a very, very, very difficult one to do because a lot of the Peperomia that are out there, they're kind of mass produced. It's not really an issue. And if there's Peperomia that we haven't heard of, they're not usually that interesting. They're not desired, all the rest. So this I feel is a little bit different to a lot of the other red plant indexes that I've done for that reason, but it was still very eye-opening and very interesting. There just doesn't seem to be the demand like the Arad community, the Hoya community or anything like that. So we will see what happens in the coming months, but that is kind of the feeling that I get from doing this and the experience I had researching this. I do hope though that I managed to do these peperomia some justice. If there are any other types of plants that you'd like to see me do a red plant index on, please do leave those down below. I do have a playlist on my channel that is named red plant index and it has all of the red plant indexes that I've ever done on it. So if there's something you've missed, you could just go back through and look there and find the one that you want. And if you like this video, please leave a like down below. It really helps. And if you'd like to see any more red plant indexes or any more of my content, then please consider hitting that subscribe button. That is it for me guys. I hope you have a fantastic weekend and I will see you in the next video. Bye!